super glad you joined us for another episode of the Modern Playbook. I'm joined by Dino P, aka Shug Knight, come to death row. Andy T, the indie god writer of the indie spotlight series at comicbookinvest.com. Steve from My Bargain Comics. Uh, you really should check out the original and insightful content on his webpage. Um, legitimately, there's always something to learn. Uh, my dear friend, the one and only Dalabin, uh, who uh, we're going to let talk a little bit about a, a new project he has related to FOC. And uh, tonight I am super happy to be joined by uh, my friend Phil. Uh, writer of the Back Nine. He's really the ring leader of the Back Nine. Used to do those con reports uh, when we had him and is uh, my go-to for all things Star Wars comic books. Uh, gentlemen, glad you're here. Happy to be here. Yep. Glad to be here. Yep, yep. I want to jump right in, uh, try to talk about uh, books that are popping in the market um, Dino, thank you. Uh, it doesn't really matter what order we're in. Uh, these are live auction results that I thought were just fascinating. Uh, for those listening to us on, on an audio format, um, the first book is an Amazing Spider-Man 361 direct market CGC 98. Ended just uh, this week for $708. Guys, did you ever think that you would see this kind of uh, price tag on this book? No, and I'm, I'm surprised it's only four bids too. I'm really surprised at that. I thought you know you get a little more action on you know at seven hundred dollars at four bids. Well, yeah. there's a a newsstand now that's uh, closing in on eight hundred. Um, I it'll have already ended by the time this podcast goes live. Um, I, I'm I'm just stunned. I mean, I get the price escalation. Uh, on ASM 300 to some extent. Um, and I appreciate that there's a forthcoming sequel to the Venom film that's going to star Woody Harrelson as Carnage. Uh, but we all know how common these books uh, from the Copper Age are and how many copies are out there and how big the census is. Um, it's really uh, an impressive auction result. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I didn't see that one coming in a million years. Yeah, I thought it would be like a forever five fifty nine eight book, and I, you know, I do all the shows, and that, I mean, for it to hit seven hundred, that's quite astonishing. It's quite a quite a good accomplishment for that book. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I, I I don't think that's the ceiling. I think it's going to continue climbing, uh, not much higher, but I mean. I can I, I can see it when we get closer to the movies. It's just going to continue climbing. Yeah, I mean it. Yeah, I, it's been right around that for a little bit, though, right? I mean, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely, it's had it's enjoyed incremental growth uh, for the last year. Um, this is nearly the high water mark uh, for direct market copies. Um, you know, GPA doesn't uh, distinguish. Uh, nor does CGC the direct market to newsstands, um, you know. But we all kind of know that uh, newsstands bring a premium, and you know, if, if you're uh, a rabid collector like uh, each and every one of you are, then you kind of pay attention to the price difference. But I think Richie's comments are insightful. Um, it looks like there's room to grow. Um, you know, I don't know that there's room to buy and flip for a profit. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, <laughs> but no. I don't, but if you want one for your PC, um, I think, it, you know, we're, we're slowly approaching a time where, um, you may get stuck paying a lot more if you wait. I mean, yeah. it clearly looks like, uh, you know, carnage is cemented as an A list, you know, villain if, if he wasn't already. Right. I mean, Absolutely. you know, he's, he's, uh, uh, had his own mini series. He's had its. He's the own ongoing, and now with, you know, and, and there's always the Donny Cates effect, right? I mean, you have absolute carnage. Um, so, uh, and then with the movie coming, I think it's kind of like a perfect storm. You know, it, it's like, okay, now carnage is getting to the same level that, you know, Venom was at. 
you know, in a uh, in 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 a prior period, and now you know, and Venom's now at a, you know another tier above that, right? Yeah, and I guess the question for me is: Will we see um, Woody Harrelson play Carnage in more than one film? Um, I think so. I mean, I've heard, I've heard that he's he's going into a second, but I mean, that's just you know, Reddit, you know, uh, blunder. But uh, it just makes sense. I mean, I know this is uh, completely out of the realm, but I mean, it, let's just say something happens and Noel gets involved somehow. They figure out whatever. I mean, he's going to have to, you know, Carnage is going to have to come back. And Woody Harrelson, if played the part well, I imagine the guy's a wonderful actor. And and also the the, the uh, little sneak peeks look great. I could imagine that you know, they're going to keep him around. It, not to belabor this point, but one of the biggest lessons of 2020 for me um, it is about comics like ASM 361, ASM 300, um, and, and there certainly have been predecessors, uh, Hulk 181, Spawn 1, for example, uh, books that we've, uh, you know, heard from really insightful collectors time and time again. There's just too many of them. There's just too many of them. Um, and in the right. long term, it doesn't seem to matter. Right. The prices right. just escalate when the demand is so high for these exactly. beloved characters. Exactly. So, um, cool. all right, what's next? Um, you got Bloodstone 1 CZC 98 for $325. Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, am I going to be kicking myself in the ass if I don't start uh, buying these books? It, it's hovered around this price tag for a long time. Um, she has very limited uh, appearances in the 616. Uh, the, it's all speculation driven off of live action that you know dates back to uh, rumors before I was collecting comic books again, for crying out loud. Um, but it's a, a hell of a character. Um, what do you guys think about this book? Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a buyer on that price to be honest. Like, I, I don't know. If I go back to what you just said about the 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 big print run books continuously amazing you. I mean, what what's the print run on this? Anybody know? It ain't much. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, uh, but yeah. one of us can figure it out. No, it's, yeah, it's, don't. it's not much. I mean, that that was that's my point, you know. So, I'm um, a buyer here. I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but uh, that, that's me. Yeah, I think, if, uh, I think with Marvel putting out, you know, 10 movies or streaming shows a year, uh, you know, if, if they continue at that clip, uh, they're eventually going to get to everyone, <laughs> right? And and, uh, and here's another thing to remember, and, and it, 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 uh, the last book we looked at made me think of it. Um, so it's 2021, and this came out in 2001, and, and people talk about that 20-year effect, right? Mm of that right. nostalgia and uh, what the just time does to uh, to print runs, right? I mean, the, these books, they get lost in collections. They get exposed to uh, floods and natural disasters. Um, and then if we look at ASM 361, that was 1992. So, you know, that's almost 30 years. So, um, yeah, it, it looks like, you know, goodbye. You know, I, I'm an El Cheapo, so I, I, I like uh, our friend Carter. So I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it, but you know, I, I'd be happy to find it in a in a collection and and, and slab it. What is, What is everybody's thoughts? What do you What do you think? Because I got the print run number. What do you, What do you think the print run is of this book? I, I love I love this game. What's the year? What's the Two, year again? Two thousand one. Oh, I say uh, print run is probably about sixty to seventy thousand. Okay, I'll okay. say thirty. Okay. I'll go with 50, 50K. Yeah, Phil took mine. I was going to say 50 as well. Can uh, I go? You ready? Yeah, go ahead. 17,000. Oh, it looks like the price is right. And their winner is Mr. Nico at, but but it's 24,561. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Well, if you're reading the tea leaves right now, Elsa is. Uh, She's uh, all uh, up on Deadpool right now. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm going a little bit 
yeah, it's just a reach, but you know, she's active in, in cur current story arcs and, um, you know, the, the current Deadpool run is, uh, is, is interesting and a, and a good read as well. So who knows? Yeah. what if they, if they give her her own ongoing title, the book doubles overnight, right? And if, um, if she gets a live action spot in Blade or, you know, uh, her own TV show developed, what's it, five times? It's a $1,500 nine eight overnight? Yeah. That's what yeah, I'm saying. But I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I guess I, I know Andy's, Andy's buying. I'm sleeping on it, dude. This is. I figured, I know the 20 year effect guys and everything, but I mean, really, I mean, we've, it's, this, this book's been on multiple lists. It's been on CBSI lists. It's been on everything. And it's still, I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, is it one, like you said, is it one that we kick about? I don't, I'm like, no, I mean, I think if it, if it raises, I think it only goes up incrementally, like at 400, maybe 500 tops. But I mean, I don't, I don't see too much investment on this. I mean, it's like she's she hasn't had her own ongoing series. There's no, I mean, you know, it's just I'm on a I'm on a leaving leaving around. I mean, if you get one for a good deal, like two hundred fifty bucks, two hundred bucks, yeah, I'll, I'll buy it. But yeah, that's fine. Love the dissenting opinions. All right, next book. Okay, uh, you had Young Avengers one. Where's your world Los Angeles variant CGC 98 for $760? Again, uh, I'm stunned at the price tag that this book pulls in. I get that it's the first appearance of Kate Bishop. I get that, uh, you know, a lot of the copies were signed. Um, but I, that's just a big, big number oh. for a trash, trash cover. Um, and it sells. <laughs> Young Avengers 1 sells. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, on the spec 10 list uh, about Iron Patriot being confirmed. Uh, I think, uh, Steve, may, you maybe nominated one of those books. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think uh, that it was that one. But, um, okay. I mean, but, there's multiple. But it was, for, it was yeah. an Iron Patriot book, though, right? Didn't you right, it was it? Iron Patriot, right. Yeah. right. Um, so, I mean, I, it's just, it's an interesting uh, book for me. I, I really am curious what you guys think. I, I'm super excited about the Hawkeye miniseries. I think everybody knows that by now. Um, it, is this is this the ceiling? Will this book keep moving? Uh, Lord knows I, I don't understand these prices, so um, I just keep getting surprised by them. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think, think this book's going to continue moving. I think it's gonna hit fifteen hundred. Yeah, my opinion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what? I can, I can see. Yep, I'll go with that. It's aggressive, and I'll go with that. I think a thousand dollars for the I'd regular cover. Yep. Oh yeah. lord. Yeah, I really yeah. believe in this character. I believe in this casting big time. Yeah, it'll be good. I totally yeah, agree. I think it's totally regardless. Agree. I, I think Phil and I have have talked. I mean, whether whether this iteration of young Avengers or any young Avengers team shows up, you know, I think it's really the, the uh, character appearances uh, that, you know, drive the value and, and the rarity. And, you know, even if, you know, the, the, uh, the young Avengers uh, team shows up or, or doesn't show up, it's also what time horizon are you talking about? Because, okay, maybe that's not the first young team we see in the MCU, but people will still be holding out hope that down the line, uh, you know, eventually they'll appear. So, And Tommy Shepard's first appearance is in this, right? That's uh, Wanda's kid, right? Speed uh, appears as an yeah. adult for the first time, right? Okay, so we're, we're approaching WandaVision, um, you know, besides the fact that hopefully we get some kind of sneak peek at uh, Hawkeye or whatever, but, uh, you know, if he ends up being in the show and having, a, you know, an impact, that could also spike this book again. Good stuff. What's next, buddy? We got Edge of Spider-Verse. Number two, only a nine six though. Uh, Greg Land variant for twenty two sixty. Bill, you like this price? I like the price a lot. Um, I was actually offered um, a nine point eight last week, 
And uh, I think the guy wanted probably sixty five hundred or six grand, but I mean this I mean this is a mega mega grail for modern age. Even I mean there's perceived print run that it could be a little bit higher than what people made for for that time, right? But yeah, I remember two years ago there was one at a uh, at uh, Charlotte Comic Con. A guy wanted twenty five hundred for a nine eight, and I was like, way way too high, <laughs> way too high. Uh, stupid me. Yeah, I mean, what, do guys, what do you guys think about the uh, future of Gwen compared to the future of Miles? Uh, is it bright for both of them? Um, you know, will will Miles start to pull away? Has Miles already started to pull away? I mean, for a long time, uh, I think. Uh, there was at least an even split among um, what I would consider shrewd collectors, investors. Uh, some preferred Miles, some preferred Gwen Stacy, uh, Spider Gwen, Gwen Stacy. Uh, what do you guys think? I think Miles has, has pulled away. Not too far, though. I mean, he's definitely got a commanding lead, um, you know, not only for uh, seasoned collectors like and speculators investors like ourselves but also you know uh new collectors uh, a lot of young youngins you know um they're more familiar with miles due to due to you know obvious reasons you know his video game and and you know he's basically the poster boy for marvel comics to kids you know like strange academy and you know she, she is definitely going to be there but she, i don't think she's there yet with uh, the newer collectors I'd really like to know who uh, 13 is going to put in her film. Yeah, that would be interesting. I would like to know that too. When you find out, please let me know. Right. Um, and my question, I guess, is if it's not Spider Woman, um, isn't it absolutely Silk. Spider Gwen? Or is it Silk? No, Silk. It's Silk. You think it's Silk for sure? Uh, not for sure, but that's who I. That's imagine. where your money's at? Silk is the, uh, I would say, the most reasonable buy-in at this point, right? It's dipped a lot. Yeah, it's the bearish play, definitely. But I would, I mean, Spider Gwen is a bullish play, but it's, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's yeah, I, I mean, it's a good call too, as well. I just think it, it, Silk is the safe play. You know, for all the discussion we've had about uh, Star Wars uh, multiverse, about, um, the future of like Batman comics and a GI Joe uh, spec list on comic book invest things have been relatively quiet about uh, the spider verse. We know we're going to get it from Sony. Uh, they've announced so many damn film projects that are in development. Um, I think, you know, people are kind of like myself, like put up or shut up. We want to see something. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Silk is a, is easier to explain to audiences than Spider Gwen, right? Because you don't you know, need a multiverse. You, you've got to explain, right? I mean, I mean, I don't know that the Gwen thing is as embedded in the culture as you know Bruce Wayne in the alley, where they can skip over that, right? I mean, so you know, first you have to explain that. Okay, you know, Gwen was Peter's girlfriend, who which. With this Tom Holland iteration, you know, we haven't even seen and that there's a multiverse and that, you know, so it, it seems like, um, you know, it's more straightforward to, you know, do a Silk or, or some other female spider character. What kind of blew my mind was that Haley Steinfeld played was the voice actress for Gwen Stacy in the movie i didn't even know that until i looked it hmm. up yeah in the edge of spider verse cartoon right yeah Pretty i mean that's kind of blew my mind yeah. yeah so definitely a lot of potential for sure i think i think the book could probably get to maybe four or five grand and then a nine eight probably i mean it can hit that magic number of 10 grand one day i think it'll take a little bit of time but it'll get there i think on a nine eight and yeah. and and you know and let's add um you know, as collectors are getting savvy. The gap between nine eight and nine six is so large on these mega modern grails. You know, I mean, and, and I'm sure we all agree. None of us want a, a, a or prefer a book. You know, two thousand four to current would be nine six when we hope it's a nine eight. 
but I mean, economics and 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 it just shows in his uh, uh, based on trends is that you know yeah, when things are low is the best time to buy, and I think that's what collectors are doing when these mega grow the gap is so big. Hey, let's just get the next best thing, and you never know, you might pull a nine six and you might actually have a presser look at it and be able to press it into a nine eight. So you know, I think it's a solid buy. Super cool book. Uh, great discussion. Really appreciate the insights. What's next? Holy crap. Yep. Star Wars Insider 140, the PX Preview Subscriber Edition with Ahsoka on it for $2.95. Phil, collectors are getting smart. Uh, what the heck's going on here? Uh, so these, I think this is a PX exclusive. So, uh, I mean, you can't, you can't go up to like a books a million and, and grab this book at that at that time you had to you had to be a member or order through someone or through titan to get that book so um it's the virgin um it's a beautiful ahsoka cover from how she is like a still from clone wars animated series um so you have this book and then you also have what's being advertised as the newsstand cover with the barcode so there's only two versions, right? Um, it's an incredibly hard book to find. These Star Wars insiders, um, and you look at the CGC census before like this whole blow up of Star Wars, and I was looking at it, and I was like, "Damn, people pay a shitload of money for these signed, like from like Hayden Christensen, like a random, just a regular cover. Someone would pay like three, four, five hundred bucks, and it's not even a nine eight sometimes." So, um, I think this, I was talking a little bit about this with, um, Andy and, and you, Nico, and that, with the uh, CBSI chat that, uh, a lot of collectors of Star Wars who also collect prints, um, they see the value in these books. Um, it's, I mean, it's a stunning cover. It's great. Um, th these also come in poly bags as well with trading cards. Uh, you see, um, uh, the rebel one, rebel ones are really hard to find. The Sabine Wren version of this type of book, it's a purple cover. It's really, really hard to find. Um, so yeah, we had this on the back nine. The, I, I accepted it as a pick for the back nine as, um, the best spec. What do you think is your, the best speculation? For 2020 and mike morella mike morello sorry um who does our cover tunes um he selected the uh star wars insider run from 100 to 200. he's no rookie of, he's no rookie when it comes to star wars uh comics and and magazines and and memorabilia yeah. either i mean he's as smart as they yeah. come when it comes to star wars he's, stuff right and he's a hunter for these things i think he almost has the whole run almost um <laughs> i've been on a, in on this uh, for almost a year, it's super, super hard to find that book. Um, and now everyone's in on it. And I'll talk about it a little bit later with uh, the last drop of uh, 199. Yeah, I, I think you got two kind of collectors on these things. The guys that have been in them for a long time, like Morello, and then the crowd that's just getting into the insiders from the 199 in the higher public, you know, so... I think that may open the floodgates on a lot of these back issue insiders and people looking for them. And, and I think a lot of them are going to become really, really sought after uh, here. There's some that are really cheap. Like you see some with the uh, pre Vizla with the dark saber and you yeah. still get what it for is, like 12 bucks. And it's yeah, got that, that newsstand stamp, you know, one one fifteen, I think is that one. Yeah, it probably is. Yep. Yeah. He's got a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. I frankly, uh, have sold a ton of them have made uh some decent cash on them you know a couple hundred bucks here a couple hundred bucks there and uh am upset that i sold any of them uh really like going back to the older magazines uh where i don't think any eyes are at all um that first uh darth maul there's probably 50 copies on ebay um i think when people start to figure out about it they'll all disappear too um i think that's you know Cheap. uh yeah, it's dirt cheap right now. Um, and there's just a lot of cool stuff here. This was uh, sort of like the go-to uh, 
periodical for Star Wars fanatics. And uh, now that we've got a whole new wave of Star Wars collectors coming up, um, you know, with a lot of cash to spend and a lot of time to make up, I, I think uh, there's a lot of upside. Uh, this is a super cool one. Um, was not shocked at this price tag, but I thought it was a good opportunity to talk to Phil. Um, Steve, you were one of the few people that was on the 199 early. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, you know, I mean, I go through previews every month and figure out what to order. And, and they, and they do, you know, honestly, they, they do bury Star Wars Insider, like deep inside Diamond previews. Um, so I can see why, um, you know, the, uh, and especially with the PX version, well, you know, I don't know who gets more newsstand or, or P or, or comic shops, but, uh, um, but, um, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can see why I, I'd love to know the print runs on, on some of these because they are not well advertised. And I think up until recently, like, um, you know, like Phil was saying, uh, you know, I, I think it was, you know, only the collectors, um, real Star Wars hardcore fans who were getting these. And, you know, I don't know, you know, how they treated them. I mean, I, you know, the magazine, the one magazine that I collect, but it was because of a subscriber I'm looking at right now is Wired magazine, you know, early in the early in the 90s. Um, but you know, I never put them uh, there's, I'm looking at them right now. They're in my bookcase, but they're not bagged and boarded or anything. So, uh, I imagine that, you know, high grade copies and even the high Republic ones that I picked up the one ninety nines, um, that I got direct from diamond. Some of them have tears. Some of them have dings Ma magazines, man, they're, uh, I guess you, you've got more surface area than a comic and you've got all that gloss. It's, it's hard to have a minty fresh. And the way they ship them too, it's like, you know, I had to order like 25 copies of like the one in one ninety nine and mix in some other insiders to make right. sure I didn't get it in a freaking envelope. Right. They, they had to ship it in a box for me. So yeah, I mean, I had the t I still had the tears that you're talking about, um, that also were apparent on the on the one ninety nine regular uh, newsstand edition as well. So, um, I mean, it's 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 hard to get. I mean, you're not getting nine eights. I mean, they're 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 tough. No. You know, no. yeah. Well, nine eights on magazines are a pain in the ass unless they're uh, a the bat dong comic. I mean, uh, <laughs> right? Like they just are. Magazines don't now, and the other thing is they take forever to get slabbed. I feel like CGC is still figuring out how to grade these books. No question um, about it. I submitted like Rebels Magazine one, like a couple of them, and I'm like, man, this is a nine eight. If this was a modern, and it's square bound, but I got dinged. But I may have to resubmit later. But I, I feel like they need to. Yeah, they're still figuring out how to grade these books for sure. And it, there's going to be a flood on these at some point. I agree. Yeah, Grading. it's fascinating stuff. Um, I don't want to belabor the point with uh, this too long. We talked about this, I, I think, maybe uh, last week or two weeks or a couple weeks ago. Uh, it seems like uh, this book's locked in uh, at this price tag now um, for nine six, right? Like $800. That's a, about double what it was uh, six months ago. Um, the, I think, uh, this is a little less than the GPA high for a nine, six. And then, um, we talked about this one too. I don't, I don't want to necessarily belabor the point either before we started. Uh, I mean, big, big number for a raw book. Uh, sure. It looks minty fresh, but you know, you don't get, you don't get nine, eight prices. You don't even get nine, six prices for raw books. You just don't. Um, why am I fascinated by this kind of stuff? Uh, because neither of these properties were part of the 10, uh, project announcement from Disney and they're getting huge numbers. I mean, just enormous numbers and there's no live action on the horizon. Um, so, you know, we either have collectors that are just 
rabid fans uh, or that are spending serious money doubling down for what they perceive to be the two biggest properties in the future. I mean, if you ask me, and again, uh, I'm by no stretch of the imagination, uh, some Star Wars guru, uh, although I might joke around and pretend like I am. Um, but I would have said, yeah, these are the two premier properties, right? Knights of the Old Republic, Revan and Malik will be the Star Wars soap opera that you know we need for the big screen to kind of save uh, those sorts of Star Wars trilogies that we'd all grown to love from our childhood and Afra, the uh you know uh, morally unscrupulous uh um, indiana jones of space uh her and her girlfriend perfection give me a tv show <laughs> right um what do you got what's your guys take on all of this so i wrote i wrote the off the uh, i'm the author of the uh, casting speculation for when I had called out that uh, possibly that Caddy O'Brien could be masking as Fulcrum as um, a, the unidentified Imperial comms officer for in, in the Mandalorian. Um, so we kind of have kind of a cliffhanger because when they storm into the bridge of that ship, uh, she kind of she kind of disappears from the screen like you can't I've, I've rewinded it and i can't freaking find her like so did she die like so i'm like been stalking her instagram page to see if she has any updates and she's not doing any interviews she's not talking shit. she ain't saying anything so uh she was on magnum pi as a as a guest as a guest role as an mma fighter or something um just just for one show she talked about that and she teased about more z nation coming up um i don't know i mean the reason i wrote that article was i saw that dr Afra 35 um uh, that that manga style cover and Afra was dressed up as a imperial officer a lieutenant um she does not appear in the story like that at all a lot of the Afra covers are teasers like there's one with her with a lightsaber and there's, she's not holding a lightsaber in the story. There's a lightsaber in the in the story, so you know rather than keep it to myself, I'm like, okay, well, let's let's just see if there's a possibility here. And I've been stalking Filoni for quite a while. I've I've watched the whole Avatar series and then Akora as well. And I mean, you see these surprise drops out of freaking nowhere, right? And it just blends in really well with the story. Um, so I think there's going to be a reveal for that character. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, I feel like during that investor day, we see like this picture of this monolith, right? And people are thinking Dawn of the Jedi. And I'm like, well, does it necessarily have to be Dawn of the Jedi? Like that monolith could be something that Dr. Afra kind of encounters, um, you know, along her adventures. There's like that monolith that shows up in Clone Wars that have the father, son, and the daughter, like these force wielder gods for Clone Wars. Um, and the you know, the three, the core, Tano, uh, Obi Wan, and Anakin, they go and investigate, you know, what's going on there with this distress call that's been shooting out for the last, I think, 2,000 years. So, hey, it's possible. I mean, I think I saw on Key Collector that the i think the director westfield what what i can't remember what her name was she was pitching the idea um to disney that yeah um for like an indiana jones story like you said um but now she's doing i think she's doing acolytes right now so which is a different no one knows what the hell that's going to be right it's going to be at the at the end of the high republic so I mean, we'll see what happens, you know? Yeah, it's really cool that um, there's so much lore and uh, so much speculation going on. I think a lot of us who have enjoyed comics for a long time really long for story-driven speculation and uh, the ability to kind of do that intelligently and thoughtfully, and Star Wars has given that to a lot of us. Uh, for the first time in a long time in a way that we're really interested in. So um, 
the last uh, Star Wars book I, I wanted to talk about was this sucker. And again, I don't want to belabor the point, but um, a blue label for 3K. Uh, this particular copy is signed by Tom Palmer. Um, you know, I'm kicking myself in the ass for not buying uh, high grade copies of this book when uh, they were cheap. Uh, when I ran out and was buying every other Star Wars uh, book I could get my hands on, uh, I picked up uh, a few of them. Uh, but not nearly enough. Um, what do you guys see as the future of Star Wars 1? I, I think it just, you know, continues to 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 grow. But if I may jump back one, one oh, please. second. Yeah, please. Um, My goodness. Yeah, so uh, thinking about Dr. Afra, it just makes me think about, you know, there's some books that when they come out, they, they just – they just hit hot and and they never look back and and that's what dr afra is i mean i remember reading you know cbsi and g plus back in the day and it, i mean it, it was it was hot from the get-go and it's just never looked back you know I, I i don't know enough about uh star wars to say if she was the first uh you know new character introduced in the 20 you know 15 you know uh, marvel um run uh you know after they after they got the license back um but it, there's just been no looking back there's just it's it reminds me of like when i was a kid you know Se secret wars 8 or asm 252 i mean those books you know from the day they came out you know they were they were just hot and they continue to this day um is it a great analogy no <laughs> you know but um yeah, so I I think, yeah, I mean everyone's been chasing this 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 variant and 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 the regular cover since since the day it came out, um, and then my comment on Knights of Old Republic, um, so I think there's some inflation here, you know I ha I hate to pick on fellow sellers, but when you put put Mint and CGC ready in the title. Uh. You know, I mean, there's there's a sucker born every minute, and you know, uh, you know, with 41 bids, you know, I wish I could, you know, I wish I could do this with my books because, I mean, I hesitate, I hesitate to put near mint on any of my books, really hesitate, um, but you know, people believe what they read rather than what they see, and I'm looking at the pictures of this right now, and if you look at the upper right hand corner. There's a scratch. There's a ding oh to the top edge. Oh boy! Um, if you look at the bottom uh, back corner, uh, you know it's not perfectly ninety degree angle. Um, you know, I, I I give kudos to the seller for taking lots of photos. Um, and and then I look at the lower right corner above the barcode. And it looks like there's a little bit of color rub or some type of scratch. So they did a really good job taking the pictures. I don't know that the buyers did a good job of uh, looking at them, though. Um, yeah, what's I, so the nine eight uh, kind of tanked for like two weeks and then popped right back up. Um, it was interesting. Uh, it was. I don't know what they're at now. I assume this is like a nine six graded price. For a direct market. Uh, yeah. I, I, I have no idea right. because I'm not I don't have any any dog in this fight. I don't I don't own a copy, you know, and I'm not I'm not buying a copy that's you know three digits. The, you know, I, I hesitated two digits because once again, right? I'm in, in Carter's El Cheapo Club. But um Tino <laughs> Cheapo. But um yeah, I mean to, part of me thinks this is just inflated by a, a lack of supply plus the CGC ready and mint and people, you know, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, sellers that could be further educated um, in grading and, and, and looking at books online. Um, uh, you know, and you bring up, you bring up an unbelievable point. I, 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 it's not only a, uh, a uh, flipper's faux pas, but it's it's uh, it's irritating to me uh, when I yeah. go and I and I go down listings and any time I see near mint, 
MT mint, you know, yeah. uh, the night or mint. Anytime I see that, I just go past it. I don't even oh, yeah. want to deal. Yeah. I don't even want to deal because even if the book is, you know, legit and it's in my price range, I guess I'll take a second look if it's a great deal. Sure. But if it's just right, there's always that little, like, uh, you know, that, that, profit margin or not profit margin, but that, that margin you have where you can go a little bit higher, a little bit. Well, when somebody puts mint or, or nine, eight near mint mint on a raw book, I just know that they're going to be a nightmare to deal with Uh huh. just yeah. from the beginning. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well right. Said, it's, either, Amen. It's, either, it's either going to be packaged uh, in a freaking <laughs> manila envelope or, or with or, duct tape or, all around it. Right. With extra. <laughs> Or or they're gonna bug you twenty times on the messages, or you know, it's just so they're they're gonna be using like cardboard like that they secondhand that they you know got out of you know their their microwave box or something. <laughs> All right, sorry sorry to. Um, no, that's good take stuff. Us off track, Nico. That makes me happy. And uh, Steve, you're uh, like uh, not just insightful, but sometimes oh. a fortune teller. Oh, look uh, at that. Hey, uh, speaking of books, bang bang. Um, mm. This thing was not a thousand, not uh, eleven hundred dollars uh, six months ago. Um, not a lot of bids, uh, but clearly two people that wanted. Uh, a newsstand copy of this book in nine, eight, um, at least that, uh, bit it out. And, um, you know, I guess, uh, I, I'm somebody who believes that we'll, we'll see secret wars in the MCU. Yeah, I am. Uh, I mean, I've heard just too much, uh, from, um, the, you know, uh, the MCU brothers, the funk soul brothers, um, Joe and Anthony Russo, uh, about, hey, we want to do Secret Wars. Hey, we want to do Secret Wars. Um, I've heard too much from uh, my friends that are in that age group uh, that are like, I want to see the Beyonder on big screen. I want to wear a white suit. I want it to be like, you know, uh, young Franco. Uh, I've seen I've, too many like ad hoc celebrity castings for the Beyonder to not think that's going to happen. If you do Secret Wars, you do the black suit. If you do a multiverse, I think you do Secret Wars. This looks like a, a prophylactic buy um, from somebody, uh, for me, who saw ASM 300 uh, jump overnight, um, and they were like, well, I better put one of those suckers away. Uh, what do you guys think? Are they a genius uh, or just a rabid collector? Um, was this a... I don't, a I, don't ha I don't have this book slapped. What, what is the label on this one? Is it... Is it First appearance and something about Marvel team up 141 or something like that. Shame on me. I don't know how the um, CGC label reads this second. Um, because you know you got the you got you got the three or four books. You got the Secret Wars Age. You got this one. You got the Marvel team up 141. Um, I just want to know uh, to see it if does this say is the one first that says, appearance of the black costume. Yeah. Uh, ties so, yeah. Marvel team up for first appearance of the black costume. Okay, so that that's important, but um, I shouldn't say but, but uh, I'll say it again. But um, I think it's it's also important that I, I believe it's Secret Wars Eight that says the black suit symbiote known later as Venom. Hmm. So, I mean, even though there's, you know, just sidetracking a little bit, there's a ton of Secret Wars 8s out there, I, you know, and tons on the census. I was just, you know, it's funny. I was just talking to Leg about this today. For so long, those 9.8s were 150 200 bucks. All of a sudden, they're $400, $450. I, in my mind, Secret Wars 8 is more important to me for, for this due to the fact that, you know, it's the origin and continuity, and then it's it is labeled by CGC in the market as the actual black suit that becomes Venom into you know ASM three hundred. But on the other hand, this book is something I've only owned one copy of, so I guess I'm a little bit biased. I've owned so many Secret Wars, and I would love to have this book. 
there's a Canadian price variant for this book also. Yep. And that is the one that people uh, needed to keep an eye out. And I believe the price on a 60 cent during that time was 75 cents. So if you see the 75 cent on there, I don't care, you know, what condition it is. As long as it doesn't look like toilet paper, you know, pick it up. But yeah, you know, it, it, it looks like it's, uh, it's on a decent trajectory here. I mean, it's, it's definitely definitely going up. I mean, but I think this one had the, the one bitter, you know. So, I mean, it wasn't even two bitters going back and forth. It was just one and one and done on this one. So. Oh, is that the one and done? I'm sorry. I've got it real small on my screen. Yeah, yeah. This one's the one and done. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think it's just somebody who wanted it. Um, but uh, it's it's not far off. I mean, 950 to 1,000 is where they've been. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not buying it for this, but. Yeah, I have a halfway decent memory, but not a perfect one. Um, cool book. <laughs> the last one I want to talk about, um, really interested in what you guys think about this, because I've passed on these books since I got back into comics. Uh, loved the Doctor Strange film. We've all talked about how uh, if there was a better cover, Katie Bar the Door, it'd be a huge book. Um, it's not a better cover. Um, and now a one eight uh, will cost you a grand um, major silver age key. The first appearance of Dr. Strange. Uh, what do you guys think uh, about this one? Um, I don't I mean, I don't even think that presents well for a one eight. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay a no nine thirty for, for that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can. It's probably still going to climb. It's probably if you're planning on getting into this, I would just uh, save some more money as an investor and 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 try to get a uh, a little higher grade. Um, I, I I wouldn't pay nine thirty for this this in particular, but obviously somebody did, and God bless them, and and I'm happy for them. But uh, yeah, I think uh, Doctor Strange has a bright future. I think the characters around him have a bright future. Like we spoke uh, earlier in the week on the phone, Nico, about Strange Tales 126, the first appearance of Clea and uh, also Dormammu. I think that book has major upside too. But yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to own this book. But uh, at the same token, I just think for uh, a 1.8 with uh, that much damage on the side, just seems like a lot. Yeah, Which, talk to me a little bit about Clea. Uh, for those that are unfamiliar, why is that book important? Well, that book is important for I mean, not only because you know it's it's you have the the three greats uh, collaborate for that book. You got Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby on the cover, and a Stanley story. But also, you know, on the cover you have uh, Dormammu, and he's in the guts uh first uh first appearance he's you know a major marvel villain throughout comic books and now in the mcu i mean he's all but confirmed in the new movie i haven't heard confirmation but i read the synopsis and he seems to say he's all over it uh, but clea clea is important and this is this is why i think this is an important point is because you know they're going into the multiverse and <clears throat> she comes into play and if if Doctor Strange uh, is going to be the new Tony Stark per se and be the leader, and he's going to be around, he's more than likely going to have a love interest, and it's not going to be America Chavez. Don't get me wrong, I love America Chavez, but I'm just saying he's probably going to have a love yeah, it's interest. Definitely not going to be America Chavez. <laughs> yes, and Clea, and Clea is 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 his is his lady throughout throughout this run. And in comics and uh, multiple actors, I guess you can say unconfirmed because they, you know, the MCU, they keep everything tight lipped. Um, but from some reliable uh, Marvel scoopers have have let it out that Lady Gaga, uh, Emma Watson um, and uh, I forgot her name, but uh, uh, what's his name's wife, the one that. Uh, that everybody thought was going to be the Fantastic Four uh, 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 first yeah, cut. Emily uh, Blunt. Emily yes. Blunt. Yes. Emily Blunt. Emily Emily Blunt was the other one that I heard. All three were approached to play Clea. I 
that didn't come from their mouths. They were, they did confirm that they were approached by the MCU or by Marvel, but they didn't say what the character was, but you know, these scoopers are saying they were all Cleo. So, you know, and this is rehashed news. I'm not telling you guys, uh, our, our listeners, anything new. You guys already know. You guys are the sharpest on YouTube. But uh, I think Clea, I believe Clea is coming, and she's not going to be a one and done or even a two and done. If Strange is going to be a part of this, and if you guys believe in uh, Strange Academy down the line as well, I mean, Strange is going to be around for a long time. I believe Clea is going to be attached to his hip at one point, and it's going to last. Yep, yep. You you hit it on the head right there for me. Like just looking into the future, looking at Strange Academy, I think the the sky is the limit on Doctor Strange on some of this stuff. I mean, you're you're looking at a what a five point five sold for like thirty three hundred. So you're like six hundred bucks a point right in that neighborhood. So I mean, this isn't yeah. it's right on right on par with the rest. So I don't know. I mean, I'm somebody's probably going to spend that nine thirty and. Be feeling really good a couple years down the road if they hold on to it. Your, your numbers are, are are right are spot on, Andy, uh, and and thanks for bringing that. It's just for me personally, I just you know, nine thirty on a, on a one eight that with that much damage, uh, pre, uh, presentable wise. It's just I don't know. It just seems like that that uh, bidder should have probably either I don't know thought about it before they actually finalized and. Oh yeah, no, I get that side of it too. I mean, presentation is everything. So, yeah. All right, guys, good stuff. I think uh, we all out of books. We're all we're all out of auction results. Uh, so the question now is, um, were you guys kind enough to bring us some books? Yeah. Yeah, I got all a couple. Right, go. All right, we'll go. Uh, we'll we'll just go in a little circle here that way. Um, all right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, some of them are LCS pickups on Wednesday, and some of them are just other stuff that's come on eBay over the last week or so. Um, first one is this. Got one of these. Had to pay fourteen bucks for this this one, but uh, I'm, I'll go for it right now. Uh, and I got a, a set of the Star Wars Darkness books in. Um, people are asking. A little too much for them right now on eBay, but there are some first appearances in these books that not not a bad buy. I don't think at this point if you can get them cheap. Um, I got the whole. Yeah. Set. Can you talk to me about? Can you talk to me about the characters that first appear there, Andy? Ah, uh, Phil would probably be better yeah. at that than I would. <laughs> but Phil, I, all I'm doing, to be honest with you, is I'm going off of the CBSI list, you know. Um, yeah. So, tell, tell us about those books, will you? Uh, you know, I know one. The last one I recognize as Zhao, but um, that's I her, actually haven't right? really. Isn't that Ayla Secura? I'm not sure, okay, but so doesn't I haven't read it? Doesn't she but, first appear um, in the first issue of that one? Yeah, the you know, I got. Uh, it's Star Wars. Uh, nineteen. Quinlan Boss is seventeen, so yeah. um, I mean they're not the bad dark, books to the buy. The darkness, I've been buying those too. Yeah, I, it's, there's, some, there's somebody in this one I know, and then there's somebody in the uh, the this one. So okay, this but is part I, of the tricky. That's Quinlan Boss right there. So I think it's mm. like a Quinlan Boss story arc, and he goes dark, right? under yep. Dooku. He's supposed to be a spy for the Jedi Council. So, um, I mean, they're, you never know. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi is eight years after Order 66. So, you never know who's going to pop. Um, but there's going to have to be a focus with that show because you just can't have everyone cameo in, that, in this Disney Plus project. I mean, they're, they're spending... Game of Thrones money every single episode. So, I mean, they're not bad books. Um, but yeah. like Andy said, there's some some guy out there who's like, yeah, one of three senses CGC 9.8. And he's asking like 1500 I'm like, you're out of your freaking mind. And like, I'm seeing like 32 views on it per hour. Like, 
what the hell is this? What the people are trying to figure it out and yeah. stuff. And you go on the CBSI <laughs> uh, list, yeah. it's there. Yeah. Right. So my philosophy is why not get it in case something happens? <laughs> in case someone bought it, someone might buy yeah. it. Right. Yeah. And then exactly. bam, it's a there's a market already. Right. I yeah. just love those covers because I remember when the list first dropped buying those books. And I remember like they were so beautiful that I was buying co copies that weren't on the list. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah. Trust me, I don't do that. I don't spend extra money. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, Team I'm, El Cheapo. But when I was doing that, like, uh, you know, there's something special about it. That's why I'm asking all these questions. I wasn't trying to interrogate you. What I was well, trying to uh, politely yeah. say is, I freaking love those comics too. Yeah. But like yeah. Ben, like, you know, the owner of CBSI, he, you know, took it to the reins, right, uh, on this list. And he would not list a character that is just like a throwaway character, you know, or someone that would not be liked by the the community of true star wars fans he would not just list just a nobody on there you know what i mean so there's yeah. something more to it definitely andy you get a chance to read them and then talk about it next time you know oh, yeah. but um okay. yeah but yeah definitely a great buy if you buy them for cover or a dollar or a little bit right, over cover, you're good. I, i'll investigate yeah. too we'll have yeah. we'll have answers yeah i paid nine bucks for the set so you, you nice. can't yeah. So, um, also got, and I got a rebag and board here because they're in so, both sides. But Revenge of the Sith, I got uh, one through four on that. Uh, three of them are newsstands. So, uh, number three is the big one on that one. That one right there, and they're they're drying up. You're not seeing as many of these on on eBay right now um, as there were. And there's number four, and. Then I got, I saw Nico, or uh, Dino had that one too, the Star Wars Tales, uh, free comic book. One. And then I picked up, this was at the LCS this week, uh, Bounty Hunters 8, I got that one. Um, picked up a crossover book, uh, the God Country one. Is that the, that's the one you picked? Yeah, I, I like that. I'm, I'm big on the God Country. So well, see, but I, my I, my theory, and we'll see if I'm nuts or not, is those are the characters that we're going to see appear, right? Yeah, I, I, you didn't it, just pick them out of the blue, right? Yeah, I, no, I, I I totally agree. Uh, then I got the Dodson variant. Right. Um, well done, well done, got sir. Got it for twenty, so I figured out one. Such a good book. Come on. Yeah, good such job, a great book. Dude. And then uh, with the – and I'm out of my realm here, but the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, big stuff in this one this week uh, from what I heard. I haven't read it yet, but Lord yeah, of the Light. That's the Lord of Light book? Yep, that's the Lord of the Light book where he supposedly reveals himself. Uh, and so I went ahead and got number nine as well so I can just cover my bases just in case. Um, and then I got uh, – I picked this up. Every time I see it, we live uh, second print number one. Uh, I think this book has huge potential. Um, just reading it, and uh, then I got these two uh, from eBay this week: uh, the Duck Avengers uh, book. Uh, well done, sir. Well done. Yeah, I'm trying to get the whole set of them, but it's not working out well for me. <laughs> and then I also got that uh, High Republic one. So. And that was uh that was it. Not a huge my pen out for the first time in the show. Well done, sir. <laughs> well Star, done. Wars, Star Wars Ten was is a really, really cool book. Um, first appearance of the Starlight Squadron, and you get this awesome appearance by a Rebels character, Mart Maiden, I think that's how you pronounce his name. And he's like Ezra's best friend, and he's the one that orchestrated the space whales coming in and um, winning the Battle of Lafal. Um, it was a really, really cool appearance for him to show up in that book. And there's another first appearance of a pilot on there as well, too. Freda Smythe, or how you pronounce it. But that's, it's it's cool. Um, I, I mean, the book has already sold for like 70, 75 bucks already right now. It's, mm -hmm. it's so, it's super hot right now. Yeah, Good job. I really needed a Zoolander um, like gif uh, in that moment. <laughs> that would have been perfect. Good stuff, Phil, man. I appreciate uh, legitimately more than you know you explaining Star Wars in a matter-of-fact, plain English manner. No one else 
seems to do that. <laughs> What's up, Steve? Star Wars is so hot. Well, right now. first of all, you may want to switch. <laughs> the, you you may want to switch us to the left side of the screen because the logo is right over your face. I don't know if that'll actually. It's okay. Happen. I don't know how to do any of these things. Okay. Your eyes to the right. little holes. Yeah. You know. I'm I'm I've got a face made for radio. <laughs> <laughs> just peek around the corner just, there. Just like uh what was that, Joey or was that Chandler who's who may have said that? Yeah. Uh, okay. So so um yeah, I've got a bunch of pickups. Um so my bargain you know, I'm always updating the article on DC promo comics. Now I have this one already in there. This was um this is the first appearance of All Star, um, and on, but for this compliments of Toys R Us, Justice League Adventures thirteen, they used a totally different cover. Um, so I, this is, I think, the third copy I've owned of this one. Well, that didn't work at all. Yeah, I should have just kept. All it. right. Yeah. Sorry. I, no, I maybe, you're, you're a kind soul. You're a kind soul. Now that really isn't that interesting, but the other two books that were in the lot. Were books that I think I knew about, but I haven't been able to trace down uh, oh, wow. the, the origin. So this might be the rarest Scooby Doo comic in existence, because as you can see, there is no price, there is no UPC. If you look in the wow. Indica inside, it says this is a facsimile edition for resale only. I have a feeling Toys R Us also gave this away, but in some manner that was less um in, in lower numbers than even the justice league adventures which isn't the easiest get either um and along with that maybe the rarest looney tunes in existence this is um 102 again no price no upc and in in the indica it says uh Facsimile edition, not for resale. So, damn. Yeah. I like so, that book. That's yeah. Book. I don't know if we'll. I don't know if we'll ever get to the bottom of some of these where they came from. Um, here's one where you know we we talked about the CBSI Star Wars for first appearance list, but uh, Ben C and some others put together the GI Joe list, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I haven't hit that really hard, but I did happen to see this one. And I forget what the significance is. I'm going to be honest about it. But the main reason I picked it up is it was on the list. And also, I didn't know that Image did news, newsstands. So you, That's unbelievable you had that uh, G.I. Joe newsstand. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. So that, I'm sure this will be a thing once, you know, G.I. Joe uh the heat starts coming right that's got to be at the end of the run right uh it's issue 20 so it's it's in there i mean it's not one or I, I mean i didn't realize that image was doing newsstands that late in time certainly not for a title like gi joe that's amazing right I, I feel like this is like the same um the same feeling i had when i discovered that some of the later issues of sandman uh have newsstand editions a vertigo title so all right so even though i'm el cheapo i went a little bit uh, i spent ten dollars each on a kickstarter but uh on on three comics for for a total of 30 but these were pretty damn cool so dynamite had a kickstarter virgin cover of the boys number one wow i think i, I, think I joined that kickstarter well, you, yours may be coming soon too. Through, I think they use Dynamic Forces to distribute it. Um, I think this is the boys number three, a Virgin cover, and this is issue number seven, Virgin cover. And they threw in a couple other freebies, um, like Dear Becky one sketch cover. So um, that th those will go in the PC. Some pickups from today. Two cop. We were just talking about Doctor Strange, and I know the Sorcerer Supreme has got a lot of attention. Uh, Nina the Conjurer first appearance. This is the action figure. No shit. Good yeah. Stuff. So you know, might do something. Might not. 
Um, here's a really weird one I found, and we'll have a couple of these that I'm, I'm just like, I don't know whether it's worth anything, but just the something about it. So this is um, AC Comics. I don't know if this is a reprint of Charlton Arrow or not, but as you, if you know Charlton history, you know Steve Ditko went over there and, and um, created, uh, you know, uh, I think the Question and some of the Watchmen predecessor characters. If you look here, there's a Mister Mixit. Um, who's a lot like Spider-Man. And I'm just like, how'd they get away with that? Um, there's actually a variant to, I think it's issue two or issue three, that's a ASM 300 homage. And it includes this character, Mr. Mixit. I need to find out more about this. But like I said, I just discovered this today. Nice. Go ahead. No, I was just saying that's nice. Yeah, thank you. Um, ASM 546, you know, first jackpot, first Mr. Negative. Can't turn that down. So here's one of the covers I'm talking about where I just have to get it because yeah. it looks damn cool. I, you know, I mean, I know like folks like Mel and I have been paying attention to Contest of Champions 3 uh, with the Miss Marvel and uh, Spider Gwen cover. But look at this. You, you've got. Uh, America Chavez, you've got Captain Marvel. I think that's Adam in the Blue Marvel uh, up there. They're they're all gone in my area. I need to just break down and start buying them on eBay. Because uh, yeah. I like both of these books. I have none of them, and it's driving me nuts, and it, it's going to soon be too late for me. Yeah, this I, I think it's just such a well-done cover. And, and it's um, the artist uh, Raza, right? He's done some other good stuff, right? Yep. A lot. Speaking of cool covers, this is uh, one that I picked up. Um, I'm no Star Wars expert, but I was like, I haven't seen this character before, and so I had to go look it up afterwards. So I guess this is Barris Ophi, right, Phil? I'm going to talk what? about her later, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, her yeah. later. Good book, good book, yeah. But uh, I don't know if she's appeared on cover before or not. Um but I know there's been some recent heat with this one, right? First, um, smoking hot Hondo. Uh, this is the B cover. Nice. Another B cover. Nice. All right, books that just look interesting. Uh, I think I'll save the the best for last because it's getting better. But Dan Parent is famous for drawing the Archie covers. There's this series from chapter house comics called die kitty die and um just um you know dan parent just he just kills it i had no idea that was a dan parent uh that there were any dan parent covers on that that's amazing yeah yeah, yeah. and this one looks like some familiar characters right uh, bro yeah yeah simple. And this one, I think this could be, I don't know. I'll, oh, well, you know, before I get to the, before I build up, I'll start, I'll keep building up the hype. Here's another one. Very Dan cool. Parent. But this, uh, I, I think I might try to get this slapped. Wow. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. Fantastic. I mean, that's, that's a homage you don't see no. often. And, and that. Think of I can think of one other one off the top of my head, and I know there's right. a couple. Now that uh, isn't this isn't Dan Parent, but still pretty yeah. pretty damn cool. Well, I like how they did the trade dress. I mean, every other time you see that book homage, uh, there's it's just like someone's holding someone's head by their hair. Right. <laughs> that thing looks sharp as hell. Yeah, that's nice. Now I know um, Mr. Long Shorts brought this to everyone's oh, attention. Boy. Oh boy, he's gonna be yeah. mad. He really I, missed out tonight. Yeah, I owe him a copy of that, too. I got to remember to get it in the mail tomorrow. Yeah, I don't even know if it's worth anything or if it's just... To you know, like, our, like 70 bucks. Is it really? Okay. Because I just know, like, you know, it, it's one of those books that keeps coming up in our in our hangout, so... Um, Sexually suggestive bubble popping. Kind of rapey. This is a ghost. Um, I I don't think there are, are any currently listed on on eBay. Wow. 
Wow. Um, it's an X, Extraordinary X-Men Annual 1. Um, and I think there was a qualifier on it. So I think that might be why there's not that many. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to put it up and list it tomorrow. <laughs> Everyone's been warned. This how one, much, I, hold on, how much you putting it up for? I, I don't know. I mean, somewhere, but maybe I'll probably go fifty to hundred with best yeah. offer. Can you, can you do this for me, Steve? Can you sure. give me like uh, until like uh, midweek so I can go buy one I saw that I left behind? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, maybe I'll I'll do one ninety nine and give you one more time, right? There you go. Well, Oh, do it at 99 cents and let it roll. Cause I'm yeah. just trying to go grab the other one. My, my, uh, my LCS, they'll, they'll price it high. If they see yours, like I'll never be able to get, oh, okay. you know what I mean? I'll never yeah. be able to get, uh, that one hack slash well, maybe, book I like because, uh, Gary put one up at $600. It'll never sell for that amount, but that will forever be the price for that book from now on. I'll, it'll just, I'll never own it. Right. Okay. Then, um, we'll, we'll do some uh, creative editing. We'll ask Brian to edit this and say, yeah, this is this is pretty worthless. D don't get it. It looks like it's got the uh, the God Country score. Especially if you own a shop, just <laughs> put it back in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Doomsday. I I just came upon this, but um, let me see if I can get it closer. <clears throat> um, this is wow. the first uh, color Usagi. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. And he's in the corner too. Yeah. He's hey, in before the corner. before you list that, hit me up. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm checking Amazon right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Amazon, great finds. Um, Doctor Voodoo, right? I don't think when he gets the MCU, I don't think there's any chance they're gonna call him Brother Voodoo. Do you? No. No. no, no, yeah. no, no. 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 Me either. I, I I don't think so. So. I think this is a reprint, um, but it it it. I've never seen that. Yeah, What's I've that? never I've never seen that Doctor Voodoo cover. Yeah, that's a one yeah. second print. What's that? What is that number one second print? No, it's just uh, number one. It's a one. I think it's a one shot. It's a one shot. Okay, it doesn't say one shot, but I think it is. Interesting. Yeah, I mean he. And that, that that goes back into our earlier conversation about Doctor Strange. I mean, he could, you know, very well take the the mantle of uh, the Sorcerer Supreme. But I, I right. you know, I, I I see them doing both, you know, yeah. for a while, and then you know, but right. yeah, nice. Um, so I had some successful sales of these two books recently, so I picked up some more copies. I this is that. um. Milestone Forever, issue one and issue two. Um, I believe Art Germ did these covers, so there weren't you know there weren't many milestone books, you know between two thousand and you know two thousand fifteen. So this, this this is one. What are the things selling for these days? If you don't, I think I sold a set for thirty bucks recently. Okay, so, yeah. Um. And then finally, I'll I'll do this one, the Iron Giant, the um, promo comic, pretty stinking cool. Which I can't add officially to the list of DC promo comics because even though it's a Warner Brothers comic, there's, you know, I looked inside, I searched, um, it's 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 not it's not DC. It is is the corporate owner. So, yeah. You know, I have strict rules like that for for nerds like me. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Makes sense to me anyway. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I got. Um good me, stuff, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. I love the band. Christ, Steve just keeps teaching me stuff. All right. Uh <laughs> Phil has disappeared. That means you know it, up, it's been it's been a while. I uh, to be honest with you, I, I you haven't been had buying much anything? money. Yeah, I, I I haven't had much money, I'll be honest with you. Um, so the only time I can even come around is, you know, if there's a 50% off sale or something, but one thing that my dad does that I should do more often now, and I didn't believe it before. I mean, I believe it cause I've heard so many stories, but, uh, my dad likes going to, uh, uh, Goodwill stores, secondhand stores. 
and libraries also. Every single time he brings in the comics, okay? No way. Every single time I get the worst stuff. I mean the worst stuff. Finally, we hit the payload. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So some of the a few of these are just like so unbelievable. I didn't even want to show them, but I, but I yeah, screw it. So you got you got the bag, no board. Okay. <laughs> um, I put a little bit of tape on the back, and you got just like a I think this is like a Batman uh, or Deathstroke thirty one, which is you know whatever. Uh, twenty five cent book, a Harley Quinn thirty eight. Uh, remember these Marvel Legacy? These oh, I yeah. think this is actually the one in twenty five. This didn't have any bag. Uh, got a Buck Rogers. All right. Uh, this whatever this is, Comic Relief Magazine. I got to get into it. All right, I'll get to the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one is uh, about a 6.0 now, but I think I could get it to maybe an 7.0. But it's a newsstand copy. Oh, no, sure. no bad. Nice. Nice. Brings yeah. back good memories. It's not in continuity, but whatever. It's a, it's a great book. It's a must-have. Yeah, for, the, um, for people here listening on uh, uh, iTunes, will you tell them about that book? Yeah, this is um, uh, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, number one. And this is the first appearance of Firestar. And, but it's not in continuity, but I don't give a shit. Or, excuse my language, I don't give a crap. And um, it's a great book. It's a classic cover. It reminds me a lot of the ASM-122 cover, The Death yeah. of the Green Goblin. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, there are some, uh, a lot of direct cop. Uh, I mean, this was during the time where direct and newsstand were, you know, uh, it, it was very close. Um, but, uh, the, if you could find anything that's like a, like a seven, five or higher at a newsstand, I would definitely, uh, you know, uh, consider it depending on the price, but this thing was two ninety nine, So nice. Yeah. Um, the other, but her, just to let you know, her other appearance in continuity in Marvel 616 continuity is, um, is the X-Men annual or Steve, you probably know this one. It's, uh, it was just, it was what I used to, books. but I, I got like 12 well. copies over here. I don't know. It's an X-Men annual book. I think there's the first Marauders in there too. Okay. That's where's ultra when you need them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Right. So, right. Exactly. Oh, um, I'm sure our, our, our listeners will get it. So, okay. So here is Age of Ultron book 10. And I believe this is the one in 25. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen that one before. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really, really cool cover. Like at first, at first glance, you're like, oh, this is like one of those covers that just means nothing, you know, mm -hmm. and well, it's not on the cover. Cause you know, your first full appearance is in here is ah, Angela. Angela. That's and, a good yeah, one. Guardians of the Galaxy 5 is the cameo. First full appearance is Age of Ultron 10 in Marvel continuity. Marvel Universe, I should say. Okay. And um, it's in really good shape. I mean, I, I, I'm actually astonished. Uh, the, to listeners that are, are speculating or investing on Angela, be careful on these Guardians of the Galaxy 5 and Age of Ultron uh, uh Tend. I would definitely look at the high ratio incentives or if there's any late printings. Uh, the, the order numbers in Comicron North American numbers are way above uh, 90 to 100,000. So just be careful. Um, I got uh, this one. This is really beat up. Uh, Thor 225, which is first Fire Lord. Um, mm. Let's see. I, I didn't even check. Uh, nope. No stamp. <laughs> no marvel no marvel value stamp but you know what i'll take it because i think he paid two or three bucks for it that's awesome uh all right so uh okay this one this is a great find i'd rather have oh, a yeah. new stand oh, yeah. but nice. i know it looks near mint but it's actually probably like a 7-0 but it just needs a press it's not color breaking and it's got some dirt on it but the thing with this uh this oh for our listeners this is uh hulk 16 uh, from 2008, I believe, and this is CGC doesn't label it as the first full appearance of uh, the Red She Hulk. Betty Ford is the Red She Hulk, but the market has so, and that's what's important. 
Um, and there is a new stand copy of this, so be on the lookout of that. That was $2.99. Um, oh, the best find of the day. The DC Nation free book. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got a, a I what if. What if oh, sure. Spider-Man uh, joined Fed up? Uh, what if one? Um, it's eh, mid-grade. It, it could use a clean and press. I, I do see a little bit of stain, so probably maybe like a 5-0 at best. Um, more of these books. It's in really good shape, too. This is Amazing Spider-Man uh, number 30. And this is from, I believe, is it 1999? Um, this is the first Moreland and, and, and Z kill. And the thing is, is that why not only Moreland, but why I like this book so much is the first J Scott Campbell, amazing Spider-Man cover that he ever worked on right here. Boom. And Pretty it's sweet. always missing from every bin I look in. Amen. Great, great find. There's two, oh, um, there's a newsstand version there's a director version but there's also a third version it's like a director's cut and it's number 29 and 30 combined so be careful you uh, want to stay away from that one there's also um a must-haves that's 30 to 32. Huh. oh yeah. okay so maybe they're doing something then okay um okay so these two were in there and i believe they must have been walmart books because I, I i think i've seen these in walmart packs this is venom 25 but this is the uh Venom Island cover, and then um, the Spider-Man Life. What's the UPC say for uh, the those two? Does it have like a real high number? Uh, the la or well, it, it's still the same five nine six zero six for direct. Uh, the SKU is uh, zero two five six one, so that would be uh, twenty five issue twenty five. That would be cover six. And that would be uh, first print. So whatever, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, cover, F. Yeah. Once, once you start collecting newsstands, as long as I have, especially moderns, start learning how to read UPC and SKUs. This is definitely came from, well, I don't know if it came from a marble pack, but I know these were in there. Um, this SKU is 2, 1, 3. Yeah. Okay. So here's, I got some saga books. Okay. And uh, we can get to that later, but here's the grand finale right here. Okay. Oh. oh, get the fuck out of here. Well done, hey. sir. Well, nice. nice. She's pretty, too. Ooh, wee. Yeah, that looks nice. good. Nice. Holy shit. Congratulations. Got some nice pages, no browning. Well done. Fantastic 467, which in collector's eyes is uh a first appearance of warlock in my eyes it's the first cover of the cocoon or him and uh first cameo of him i don't know what cgc labels it but i don't give a crap i love this book and thor 165 you can give me those all day every day and on sunday um yeah i i haven't even put it in a bag and board yet i don't know why i keep tossing it around like this but uh I'm very excited and I've been waiting patiently to show you guys this. So, um, and then I got a couple more. I, okay. So I, I, I'm not going to throw a retailer, this certain retailer under the bus. Um, we love all you guys and we appreciate you guys, but this one particular needs to speed up their shipping <laughs> because I ordered this book during a big sale, uh, around Halloween and it just showed up, but, I know that I pay either $23 and I got it for 50% off. No, I have 40% off. And uh, so I think I paid like 13, 14 bucks and there was two of them that showed up and I couldn't believe it. I completely forgot about it. And then when I checked eBay prices, I was shocked. I had no idea because I just stopped following the book. This is uh, two of them. Amazing Fantasy, number 10, and they're both 9-8 worthy. Or at least nine six nine eight. I haven't looked them close. This is your first appearance of Nina Price, uh, retailer yeah. orders or under fifteen thousand. And uh, about about a month ago, this was a seventy five dollar book. Now they're going for about thirty to forty. Aww. So depending on where the character goes, hey, you know what? I'm happy. And I remember that, uh, dude. That whole run is so great from two thousand four. Oh, I just love it. 
Um, okay, so I got some other 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 uh, Google sword. We'll skip those. Okay, so I got um, this came in the mail. Um, this is a this is a Amazing Spider-Man ten, and this is the one in one hundred J. Scott Campbell version. It's not like a store exclusive or anything. It's only a thirty forty dollar book, but it, it's got potential. I, I love the cover. I, I, I like J. Scott Campbell. His coloring, his cut, co his pencils are great. But you know, I think people got over the uh, oversaturation. Like the, like people are saying, what's happening with Momoko, the J. Scott Campbell effect. But I think with him, is which a lot of people don't point out, is like we were talking earlier, the Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe, is the coloring. His coloring is just unbelievable. Um, I got another one of these, these Marvel Action Spider-Man, John Boy Myers, uh, you know, those three sets. And um, this, I, I showed up on my want list at uh, my comic shop, and they had it listed as VF80, and I think they had it for like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that, 14, 15 bucks. I like the spec value on this book, especially with Armor Wars coming. And if Burnthal ever does come back, which is, is a reach, eh, man, I would just die to see him in the War Machine freaking armor. I would go absolutely ape shit. And then, oh, here's another of the, here's another from the Goodwill store, Secret War. Always too. good. Always a good pet. Uh, and then I got uh, this is another one from the Goodwill store, Southern Bastards number one. Dude, Someday, great third third print. Um, and then uh, let's see, I gotta show you one uh, one more, and then we'll we'll get going here. Okay, so right here, I want to show you. So I sent a picture to our our our, our wonderful and vibrant host, uh, Nico Esquire. And of, of all the Fantastic Four 353s, and he shared his love as well when we speculated on this book when it was a 50 cent to two dollar book. And we have piles of them. So I started opening these books, I started going through my long box, I started opening these books, and um, I looked on the back and I realized where I bought them, where I got them for. I got them all for two dollars and 86 cents a piece from New Cadia, right? And um, so and you know, price is right there on the back, Nick Eddie. Right but I got a newsstand now. I understand that people want uh, what's his name on the front, and and I totally agree with the collecting curve that it's very important for a first appearance in the guts of a book to also have that character on the cover. That is very important. It's the way the market as is projecting. But in this case, with these Fantastic Four books, with how high a print run these are these newsstands come at a premium and when to find one that's very high grade like this especially with uh with owen wilson playing uh, mr mobius in loki and now confirmed uh, for loki 2 i don't know if mobius will be in it but loki 2 is definitely on this could be one that i would if somebody comes across it and it's you know nine eight worthy slap it up yep. that's it that's been a great seller yeah, and you took, took the words out of my mouth. We're getting Loki season two. I can't, can't freaking wait. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Brother you, Phil. You. All right, so I'm um, going to kind of cheat here and just uh, show some books that I've been processing the past uh, maybe six weeks. Um, just stuff that I can share, and then we'll go into um, Star Wars, all right? So, um, since everyone's on the previews, and I don't know what people are going to pay, you know, for, you know, these diamond previews, whether that's the Justice Society 1, Alex Ross cover. Cool. Um, oh, nice. For Cyclone. Yep. So, and yeah. So, he's got Stargirl here, too, you know? Smart. So, that's yeah, you know. Six bucks, whatever, you know, just throw it in the box. We'll see how that's, the great, that's, a, that's a great, that's a great, uh, a show off right there. And me and Steve have been saying the same thing. It's not that we're speculating or telling people to invest heavy in previews. It's just, you know what? The market there, there are collectors out there that are interested in these books. I mean, what yeah. are we supposed to do? Just put them on the wayside. I right. mean, they want the first printed 
image of these yeah. characters that they love and they, they have a connection to, you know? Um, I got another one here, six bucks. Um, Tomorrow and the nice. Truth, you know? So why not, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. sure, you know? Uh, start off with a couple vintage. Uh, I wrote about this as a pick from one of my back nines. Um, Journey, 112, Thor and Hulk. So oh, I have I it as a 7.5. I love I paid, that book. Yeah, I paid I like 300 too. for it, you know? So, I mean, I'm not selling this stuff. I mean, vintage is just so hard to find right now. I'm just stacking it up. I'm like, all right, when I do cons again, like in 2022, then, you know, I'll make them available again. In the meantime, I'll just do modern. Um, this was kind of fun. Um, it's a three pack. Uh, cool. Marvel Age Six. Um, Hell yeah! I've never seen that. Basically, you know, I bought it for like thirty bucks. I'm like, sure, why not? Give it a shot, you know. Um, Ooh. I buy my picks when I whenever I do my back nines. Uh, this is the first. Uh, I remember when that was that was 20. hot. Oh, what, it was what? hot before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What? What is that? Um, I can't remember. It's the uh, first lesbian uh, Mary J. Watson uh, as wow. Spider Woman. Huh. So you never know. I mean, if they want to play yeah. that card ever with her and uh, Zendaya wants to get down, you know, with the females, <laughs> give you a good one. You never know, right? <laughs> Uh, here's Andy. Loves this book, decision. this title. Canto. There you go. There you go. Third print. Right. You know, I bought it for cover. Why not? You know, that was so last I, week. I just got. I just got two more of those on the IDW site. They're three ninety nine. Yeah, they're limit one. So I picked one. I picked one up. Yeah, good eye. For sure. Yeah, I, I did. I go and I go back. Yeah, they, it, one of the TMNTs is a one per person too. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's action figure cover for G.I. Joe, Baroness. I didn't know how much this... I, I was surprised that this is going for good money. I had no idea. So, I yeah. mean, that was that was five bucks. I have it listed for 45 on a 9-0. Uh, Andy knows this one. There you it's go. The second yeah. print, Age of Rebellion, oh, one, Boba Fett. That's hard to find. <laughs> Holy crap. And oh. you... You talk about previews. There's a preview for that bad boy too. Right. Yeah. I saw no you post it on IG. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. I mean, that's like, that's awesome. I mean, like, this, this actually could be like the first canyon story for Boba Fett since uh, Disney bought, yeah. Yeah. Star Wars. It's cool. I mean, it's Western cover, you know, on this mechanical horse, right? Or camel. Yep. Was that the one, Nico, in the summer when Carter cut that tape? That was the one that he liked down Absolutely. the line? Yeah. Yeah, he was all over it. Yeah. I still couldn't find that. I think he bought them all on a 200-mile radius. <laughs> right before this spiked, right? Ridiculous money. Uh, this is the first appearance of Quinlan Voss, um, Star Wars 17 Dark Horse. Um so the the spec is that we'll see. It's possible we can see him in Bad Batch. Um, the, the background about Quinlan Voss is that uh, he was originally supposed to die uh, during Order sixty six, and uh, Dave Filoni's like, "No, we're gonna make his death legends. I have plans for this guy." So there you go. You know, I mean, and a uh, nine eight. I'm probably sure you guys covered it. Maybe um, I think it sold for like twelve hundred. I think or something. Oh, get the fuck out of here! Bonkers, stupid, stupid yeah. money. Stole for a th I think it was a thousand bucks. Was it? Yeah. I didn't even know, dude. I got a slab in my coffee, so I had no idea. Yep. I like this book a lot. Um, Rogue Squadron is going to be a movie, right? Um, and he pulled out the Star Wars ten. And it's got that panel with the whole team of the uh, first Starlight Squadron. Um, Yvonne, Ever, Ever, uh, Yvonne Verlaine is a part of that team. Um, and she's a really important part of this uh, Princess Leia series. This is the second print. 
of Princess Leia 1, and you can still get this for cover. For those who are savvy, uh, know where to shop, I you can you can get this still for like four bucks or three fifty or something. And it's a it's a really tough cover to get a nine eight. Um you know, I, I think with to get Patty Jenkins on board to do a move like an X Wing movie, like she's gotta have at least one or two female horses that she can ride, you know, like Gal Gadot for Wonder Woman. And she's got a very compelling story. She's a royal, um and she decides to be a pilot, and she's one of the best ones. She was uh there for um uh, destruction of the Death Star, and she was uh, her ship was there. Um, I think she was also there on Endor as well uh, at Return of the Jedi. Just her ship, they didn't show the actress or the the character, but she was there. So they, you know, That's a smart. Yeah, you know, the, the Princess Leia was printed into Infinity. The even the ratio of variants aren't that attractive. That second prince is smart, smart play. Yeah, it's a really cheap cool. buy, um, high floor. The Alex Ross um, variant and the sketch are the ones to buy for that one. I think the Alex Ross is one in two hundred. I bit the bullet. I bought. I bought two for like seventy five bucks. Oh, I'm forgetting it's a one in two hundred. Yeah, the, the sketch I think is one in two hundred. Okay. But I well, you that, can get it for under a hundred. That, that makes know. it more attractive, though. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> that high yeah. ratio. Right. Yeah. Isn't there uh, a third? Isn't there a third print for that book as well, or no? Uh, there's a third print for Princess Leia two, and that is the first cover of Yvonne Berlain. Not a gotcha. bad buy either. I got one or two of those. Not a bad yep. buy. Uh, Key Collector posted this up um, two weeks ago or so. It's the uh, first appearance of uh, the seventh sister. Uh, she's one of those in inquisitors. She doesn't show up in Rebels, but um, no stories uh, about her after after her comic appearances. So, hey, you know, could show up, possibly, right? You know, since all the other inquisitors are dead. Um, that, that have been introduced in the animated series and Rebels. Possible possible, cho possible, good choice, right? And then, yeah, I meant to bring this up um, earlier when you uh, were talking about Revan. And this is the one that uh, I think his name, John Jackson Miller, was uh, on an interview with CBSI. And he pointed out that this is the first appearance of Revan. Um, he's robed can't see his face is like tiny little candy corn in the crowd and he's accompanying squint malik um so this sold for uh this is a flip book it's got um star wars rebellion zero on the back um so nice. you know it's a flip book i think it's a 25 cent book so a nine eight just sold like yesterday for or today for two hundred seventy five dollars. So, and you can find these like on eBay. Just look for uh, Star Wars Rebellion Zero flip book. You can get it cheaper sometimes, you know. So yeah. I bought a bunch of these a couple months ago. So that's the end of my haul here, and then my haul continues. With the High Republic and Star Wars stuff to talk about. So uh, I haven't read a book in like since college, like 20 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> so, I mean, I just, I'm like so balls deep into Star Wars. I spent so much money on it the past year. And uh, I picked up um, The Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule. There's, this is the regular cover uh, jacket, um, outofprint.com has uh has a variant for this it comes with like jedi socks and like a pin or something that's 50 bucks it's a beautiful cover um so I, i'm in like a, what's that i said tell me about the socks i was just oh, it's like jedi <laughs> like green jedi socks i don't know i mean uh, i don't know it may, be, make you laugh, it may be cool i mean i like to see the um the display box for it it could it could yeah. be a really cool 
item to buy. I, I might get it. It's fifty bucks. Uh, this cost me twenty eight at books a million, and I actually went to the mall for the first time in like uh, since COVID ever started. And I went to my local mall, and um, the girl at books a million was like, "Yeah, you know, it's kind of amazing. A lot of people coming in here." locally buying star wars toys and figures legos and books and you know she's tell telling me like you know star wars is like really helping families and individuals cope with the the covid pandemic you know and i i mean that's just kind of i mean we're seeing that with comics you know but it's i mean it's hitting funko legos like you name it you know so i also found um we were talking about this earlier steve um Brought this up. This is the uh, Star Wars Insider 199. Um, it is. It serves as uh, Chapter Zero for this book. Um, so you have two characters that they talk about: a married Jedi couple, Joss and Pika, and um, they're just you know living their daily lives and then it, this distress call happens and she has to go on board the third horizon where um Avar chris is you know the captain and uh they're off to a rescue um the, in the hetzel galaxy there's a the, uh the beginning of the great disaster and the great disaster is this hyperspace um I would like to describe it as like a, a galactic hurricane or a storm where there's like no one knows what it is, but it starts off with like 42 objects they cannot identify. There's no hyperspace drive that they can detect. And they're just hitting outposts and objects and planets. Um, so no one knows what the hell is, what's the heck is uh, causing it. No one knows. So, um, I'm at chapter four right now where Ava Chris is coming in to the rescue with her ship in the, on the third horizon and trying to, uh, help these people. Um, and then, yeah, I'm not sure if you were able to order these, Steve, but this was the, uh, PX variant for the Star Wars Insider 199. Um, uh, no, I don't think that was available. That's the subscriber. Uh, oh, cover, I think. you're right, right. Right. Okay. Sorry. My bad. This was the subscriber. That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've been seeing these listed for 150 or 250. I'll be so. curious to see the, how the, um, newsstand performs. I picked up my first one, uh, this week. I haven't listed it yet, but since it doesn't have the high Republic cover, I'm, I'll be curious to see, you know, they're selling for like fifty bucks. Yeah, it's kind of insane, yeah. you know. Because the, the content's kind of... still inside of it, right? Like, the, yeah, but yeah, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, okay, but let's talk about the other Star Wars insiders, like those early Ahsokas. No one gives a shit unless it's got the cool cover, right? Well, yeah. if they're in next, I would say if it's a nexus with any of the uh, the video games, right? Um, or Clone Wars. Or rebels, it's a good book to get. Darth I'm Maul not suggesting they're right bad now. buys. I just yeah. mean like, it, oh, right now, yeah, they don't give a shit. Republic, yeah, you're right, and yeah, nobody cares. No so, one cares. Yeah, it's it's interesting that the High Republic newsstand sort of broke the mold, having the wrong uh, cover because of the guts, and I, I think that's why uh, you said, talked about this earlier. These Star Wars insiders are real interesting. How they're going to shake yeah. out and how they're going to develop because. You know, people just don't understand them yet. Yeah. So you have – it's a real preview, you know? Like mm -hmm. real sketches um, of the comic, black and white, you know? Um, you know, they got word bubbles. It's, it's a damn preview. It's, it's freaking awesome. And then Chapter Zero starts with a big splash page, you know? The Starlight Beacon. And the Starlight Beacon is um, it's like a, a space station for the High Republic, and it's going from the inner rim to the outer rim to as a as a symbol for the High Republic. And um, there is politics um, in this book where the inner rim is like kind of a high and mighty, right? And then as you go further out into the outer rim, it's like people who 
have less opportunity, right? Less skilled, making less money, you know? Um, so you have, this is chapter zero right here in 199. And then that's going to continue in um, these two characters will continue their story in uh, Star Wars Insider 200, which has the uh, Peach Momoko cover and the, uh, I think it's the PX silver foil on the title for that. And that, a bunch of people were buying that like, hell, you know, first Baby Yoda, right? And um, on a print, right? That's possible. You know, maybe with a nexus to a comic book inside. We had, I mean, I had an insider telling me that there could be a comic in that book, so I, I bought it. Turns out it was just a preview. Um, and then I guess this is going around to um, the King in Black uh, previews, Marvel previews. And um, you get some other other cool content in this one, too. Uh, so currently these are going for like 25 bucks. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, you got the, the timeline of the high Republic. They kind of explain, right. And then, um, you got the Noto cover for number one. Okay. And then, uh, you go further and yeah. Um, minus the word bubbles, you got, um, Panels from issue one, and then you got the Nile 110 variant, and uh, the other, the other, the third cover, right, with the uh, sentient plant being, um, which are kind of seem like they're evil. So, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like High Republic, I think it has. Very good potential. A lot of reviews are saying that critics are saying like, "Oh yeah, this is trash." Whatever. But it's like, well, you're just reading like for number one. It's just the, <laughs> you just kind of get to know the character. I mean, right? I, I mean, it wasn't fandom menace, thank God. You know. So um, Tw people hated crossover after twelve pages too. You know, I think <laughs> uh, I think a lot of comic people just love to hate. It's like the player haters ball. Like, yeah, so, I uh, hate you because I hate you because I hate you. Star Wars fans, Marvel <laughs> fans, Flipside fans. I, I'm I'm excited to read it. I'll wait for a couple issues. Uh, but now that people hate it a lot, I might crack the one I have. Um, yeah, I, yeah. That's what happened uh, with Crosshair. People cried about it enough, and I'm like, I'll be reading that promptly. Uh, yeah. And it was good. Yeah, you I know. think that uh, – that, um, the. The black character, the Padawan, has a, a feel for uh, like Ahsoka Tano and Anakin, Andy and I, and, and all of us pre-show were talking about it. So I think she has huge potential with a double green lightsaber. Um, also, I'm not sure if you guys can drop this on the screen, but um, I put this in the comments on polygon.com. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, it looks real. like there's a black saber, maybe. We're we're gonna have to talk to Brian about whatever you're telling us to do right now. Because oh, to edit it in, maybe. Okay, he's but smart. Still, I'm not. Let's just be okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a there's a, it's on my Instagram page. If you go on Vintage Comics and Doys, uh, there's, uh, there's the handle. The truth. So I I, I kind of tease. I'm like, is this the Dark Saber? This looks like it. So there's this character that's all covered up. You know, I'm not sure if she's a female, right? But um, there's a there's a there's a character holding a black lightsaber, so I'm kind of like this is this is compelling and very interesting. Um, okay, so moving forward, um, I like to talk about um, a character that some people. Uh, so this is the book Star Wars and uh, Tales One. Okay, so hear me out. So. Um, there's a character in here that shows up in the Mandalorian. Oh, dude, this is. I hope you were talking about. I hope. Okay. Ah, ah, I love it that you knew that. And there's another cool first appearance in that one too. So okay, well, um, can't think which one of what who you're talking about, but I don't. I know there's Revan's a dark girlfriend. one too. Which one? Revan's girlfriend. 
Yeah. yeah. That's her first really? appearance. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a great Yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, you got, you got, you got Mara Jade here. You know, there's a Mara Jade story here. I haven't read it. I was more focused on... Um, I was more focused on this character here. So, this character here, uh, it made the latest CBSI update on December 11th or 12th uh, during the end of The Mandalorian. We did an update to the list. So, this is... Uh, this is the R5 uh, unit in um, in the first Star Wars movie, okay? Uh, this is Skippy the Jedi droid. I look him up in, Je in Wikipedia. They will not say he's a uh, legend, so I'm assuming he's Canyon. Um, so let me try to get some the page here. Um, so... It really it may not be able to read it, but Obi Wan on Tatooine, um, they say here in the story that he has always sensed that there was two people or two beings that had the Force on Tatooine. Okay, and it turns out that Skippy, right? They nicknamed him Skippy. He's like this. He's the R five unit. Um, he finds out that he has the Force. Um, some panels here where he's learning how to throw a rock. Um, he discovers that he's got the Force, and he's working for Jabba, Jabba the Hutt as well. Um, so he finds a way to escape, and there's this room in the story where he wanders the, the desert for a long while, possibly, right? And he's picked up by the Jawas, right? And well, that's where we see him, like kind of one of those early scenes in the first movie. Okay, and this is where you know where Luke finds um, R two D two right and C three PO right from the Jawas. And uh, it's quite funny that. This bad motivator blows up, and everyone jokes about that, right? Well, it says here, according to the comic, that the Force told him to blow up so Luke can pick um, R2-D2 in this panel right here, right? And as he's blowing up, he's telling C-3PO, hey, tell... And he's using the Force to tell C-3PO, another droid, Tell him, tell Luke to pick uh, R two D two, right? So now he becomes Force Ghost, okay? And um, yeah, you know, I mean, that was the the Force telling him to, you know, kill himself to, um, so then Luke can, you know, find the two his two uh, droids to start out the the, the trilogy. So. I think it's an interesting pick. Um, there's three different covers here. You have the direct edition. You have the newsstand. And then you have a red bar, which was a Dynamic Forces uh, special variant, which has, I think I had a signature as well. So um, we see the character be confirmed by Star Wars executives in The Mandalorian in Season 2 that that was the indeed the same droid that had a bad motivator and that he's alive and well um connecting <laughs> the dots here that feloni feloni played chopper the droid in rebels i mean maybe feloni is itching maybe maybe to to use this droid again or maybe it's just a funny easter egg but the very the fact that they say obi-wan sensed him that he was a, a force user has me intrigued there's room in the story that he um, wandered the desert and found Obi-Wan, right? And then that leads into the first movie. So, yeah, a bit wild spec, but <laughs> it could happen. You never know, right? So going back to Obi-Wan. That's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. But but uh, very cool. Very cool. It's it's fun. It's, yeah. it's definitely a fun spec. Yeah. Um, 
that's for sure. Um, so I wanted to go back and so let's see here. So let me look at my notes. So for Obi Wan Kenobi, I also think that this is a a good book too. Um, Attack of the Clones, Episode Two. Okay, so CBSI has this as the first appearance of Jango Fett. Um, things are changing now, right? We're considering graphic novels, right? Because of Defenders of the Lost Temple. Um, this this came out before this book. Um, a newsstand, I think, sold for a thousand bucks by uh, best offer on a newsstand, oh, and then a nine eight direct. Okay, to solidify the direct market, um, sold for three hundred bucks or more oh. on a nine eight, and these are selling for fifty bucks a pop. They're advertised as graphic novels or paperbacks. It's, uh, you know, the art is consistent with, like, Star Wars tales, you know, some of the Star Wars tales. But if Jarrell is blowing up to being, like, a few hundred dollar book raw, then this warrants consideration for sure. Um, but I was bringing this book up. I mean, so comic book formats count, okay? People care about a first appearance in a comic book format. This also has, uh, okay, so looking at the cover too, uh, is the first cover appearance of Hayden Christensen, right? And you also have the first appearance of Luminara. Uh, she's a Jedi Master, and um, she's right here, right? See, we're talking about this, Steve. I'll drop yep. this later. Uh, so that's Luminara, and she gets um captured by the empire during order 66 and she shows up later um in rebels however when they find her she's already dead already and um i think that she could show up in obi-wan kenobi at some point um obviously she's she escapes order 66 and then just before her rebel, rebel's appearance in season one, uh, she's uh, captured by the Empire and and passes away. Um, so you have her first full appearance in this book, which is dirt cheap. And I think I think there's only three CGC nine point eights of this book. It's incredibly hard to find this book in mint condition. You got dirty back covers on this book. Um, Granted, with the, the print run, it's so huge, but it's really tough to find in high grade. Um, you have the cameo of Barris Ophi in that book, but the first full appearance I discovered with the CBSI team, I worked with them, and this is this is our first full appearance. And uh, this is great um, Ahsoka Tano spec, because this was like her best friend. And Ahsoka Tano, if you didn't know, why she left the Jedi Order was um, there was a bombing at the Jedi Temple, and she was accused. There were some events that happened, and she was accused of being the, the perpetrator that organized this bombing and another killing of someone that, in captive. Um, so she, she found out that, well, she was on the right track that the Jedi are just tools and like, they're just being used and they're not, they're just being, I mean, what's the cause, right? So, um, that's her best friend, uh, Barry Sophie. She's got to show up. Like, there's just no way that you cannot complete this story, uh, with a ta uh, Ahsoka Tana without her, uh, a 9.8 has sold for like three fifty. You could buy this raw for twenty bucks, like in high grade, like on eBay right now. It's a good Phil, book. It's free comic is, book day. Phil, is that a flip book? Because I know the uh, with the Darth Maul brother, his brother, free comic book day. I know that one. That one's a flip book. Uh, okay, uh, well, I don't think it is, but okay, so it's not. Okay. Yeah, and hey, Phil, um, you have to be careful. Coder one was the first Bastila Sean. Uh, forgive me, not Tails one. I was like, did I have that screwed up? And I did. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. Yeah, and you got to be worried about... Um, oh, yeah. 
store the stamp. Bar, the, the, it can't. The store stamp will make it into a green label at CGC. So be careful to not to buy those. But yeah, um, that's. I'm not sure how long I talked, but uh, no, amazing, that's my buddy. little insight. No, good for SW. If you guys have any other questions, right. I I got I got one just to touch on the one that you have, the Boba Fett uh, book. So this is the preview for it. Since we're turning this into a preview show, nice. Um, this is uh, May the Fourth be with you. Free preview, and inside it has the cover to the Boba Fett Age of Rebellion, mm -hmm. and it's got four page spread on it. So nice just to, to touch back on that, but it's not a bad one to have. You can pick them up for like a dollar fifty right now, something like that. Wow. So, Good so Andy, we we've talked about you've been asking about this book, uh Boba Fett Underworld One. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. And we're just kind of like scratching our heads like what the hell's going on with this book? Like why are people buying this book? So I guess the underlining story is that uh, you have Boba Fett, Lando, IG-88, Dengar, and some other uh, bounty hunters. They're being hired by the Hutt family, three Hutt family members, to go, av go after this, uh, to do a treasure hunt. And whoever wins, then that Hutt is the, the best Hutt in the family, right? So it's a fun story. You got Boba Fett in there. Um, I mean, could they do a flashback? uh on the boba fett series possible um i think it'd be more fun to do it in lando in current in current timeline to have everyone come show up there young um but number one uh i can't confirm but i think it's the first appearance of two hut family members embra and malta so uh there's a lot of huts right if you ever do the deep dive research, um, I just started just to take a look at it. Um, but I, I mean, if they use the story, they're going to use them. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, the other thing is, I think it's got like a little uh, dumb appeal because Boba Fett underworld book of Boba Fett. He's going to take over for Jabba, you know, I, much in the same way, Jedi Academy, like, Luke's going to take Grogu and he's going to teach him. Luke taught people. You know, that surface level, uh, it sells. It might, <laughs> yeah. might not sell like forever. Right. Uh, but certainly you might, sell. You might not agree with it, but it's yeah, it, it might be stupid. Uh, but. Yeah. Do you guys remember when Last Jedi got popular? And then do you guys remember when that Star Wars book that had Last Jedi written on the cover that had absolutely nothing to do with oh, the Oh, right, right, right. Still movie, yeah. Got Still popular sells. and, and sell, it started selling for a lot of money. Um, I felt guilty after selling that book. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew, you know, so so I understand that situation. It's like, you know, do you, do you agree with the spec when it sells? No. Man, and, and just... You gotta do your part. <laughs> That's all yep. I gotta say. Yep, I'm with you there. Um, so we're at the two hour mark. You guys ready to call it? It's fucking twelve forty three at night. Yeah. Oh, oh, what, what do you mean? This is this is twelve thirteen minutes into drunken chats start time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why I don't, which is why I don't make it. Uh, if you guys this have sober chat, <laughs> yeah, if you survived uh, this whole thing and. Um, in one sitting we're appreciative if it's taking you more than one we're appreciative uh, thanks guys